This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO in Chicago 2011. And in addition to speaking to physicians about news and clinical data being presented at this meeting, we're also speaking with advocates and leaders of organizations that are dedicated to supporting the lives of people with cancer, as well as unifying the efforts between the professional physician communities and the patient communities too. So right now I'm joined by Karen Carlson, who's the Executive Director of the Foundation for Women's Cancer. It's the 20th anniversary of this foundation, which is sponsored by the Society for Gynecologic Oncologists. Yes, thank you, Selma. Um, we're thrilled to be here today. And actually, we were founded by the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists in 1991. So this being our 20-year anniversary, we've worked together for such a long time. It's just really a, an honor and privilege to be here. And in all the times we've spent working together, I think we've really made a difference. So much has changed. I mean, we still have a long way to go. But the landscape of gynecologic malignancies, and in particular, ovarian mm -hmm. cancer, has such a, a different profile and a greater hope mm -hmm. than when you began your work. Mm -hmm. Well, I will tell you, everything that you said is absolutely true. Along with quality of life, um, it's such a difference. Um, I'll tell you, you know, I, I sit in meetings or I admit places sometimes, even meetings like this where sometimes women will say, oh, I'm so upset that nothing's being done. And I almost have to control myself because, you know, going back over the 20 years since we formed, um, it's been amazing to see the groundswell of activity, the progress that's been made, the number of physicians who have joined the field, um, again, the quality of life. I mean, there is, I mean, it's unbelievable in my mind what's, what the changes have been. Probably when a woman is diagnosed with one of the gynecologic cancers, mm -hmm. she'll find her way specifically to that disease advocate and support organization. But the foundation does something a little bit different, mm -hmm. and I think we should help our viewers understand how they can utilize, sure. especially your website. Sure. And one of my favorite components of the website is if a woman needs to find mm -hmm. a gynecologic oncologist mm -hmm. in her community, mm -hmm. that you've got the map and the ability Absolutely. to locate throughout the regions of the country mm -hmm. because it's such a critical specialist. Absolutely. Well, you know, again, we've talked about the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists, and every member of the society is a member of the foundation. Our website is Foundation for Women's Cancer, and you can find it, our Women's Cancer Network and our other websites. But in particular, we have the Find a Doctor section that you're referring to, and in particularly, it's the Find a Gynecologic Oncologist. It's every board-certified member of in the country of the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists is on that site. So there's other physicians in training, but these are the doctors who are board-certified, and you can pull up by zip code or you can pull up by last name, and it will give you all the doctors in a random listing so it's not like we're recommending one over the other. We just can tell you that they're, they're board certified and we know that they're excellent physicians. Yeah, it's extremely important because it's that one specialty that I don't think it would be easy unless your own doctor gave you a referral. Where am I going to find that kind of clinical specialist? We also have 1-800-444-4441 um, information hotline. And basically that hotline is free for women who don't have internet access. And so you can call in the same exact thing. You can tell what zip code you'd like to find. You can say what doctor you'd like to find, and it's a free service for, for women and others in the country. What are some of the current projects that okay. you're involved in? We put on survivor courses, and I will tell you, it's been, since 1995, it's been such a delight to get to know these women in the country who are so strong and so amazing. And we've held over 40 courses to date. We have primarily ovarian cancer survivor courses, but not because we favor those courses versus others. It's really due to funding earmark that we receive. And we have about 200 women attend these courses, and we geographically spread them across the country. Just recently, we came back from a course in Seattle, and then before that, Albuquerque, the month before, over 200 women um, in the audience. And we're very proud of those efforts. We have members of our foundation, you know, the physicians like Dr. Herzog, who you mentioned previously, who are, you know, they, they don't dedicate their time. They come on a weekend, and they talk to the women along with other leading specialists in the country. And um, it's been unbelievable. We can't, I mean, we almost can't keep up with the schedule about how many courses now we have. We have 11 this year alone. 
and we will be holding three in conjunction with our National Race to End Women's Cancer, um, which is coming up in November. How do you interface with the existing regional organizations and national advocate organizations? In 1998 is really when a majority of the advocate organizations formed. And so what we did is we asked them to come together in a room with all the leaders of those groups to say there's enough work for all of us. We need to work together, collaborate. We need to not duplicate efforts. So to this day, the foundation hosts what's called the Allied Support Group, and it has 28 national organizations that are members, of which the leaders of those organizations come together twice a year. We put together the agenda, we talk about what we're doing individually, and then we also talk about ways we can work together. And I think you know we're so proud of that that group because you know not all cancers have that where you know there's some competition between others and. Our group is really you know, collaborative and we really, I think it's been wonderful for us to sit in a room and hear what each other is doing so that we can help all the women out there and not just you know, specialize in one thing, but we really come together as a package. Right, and we're not dealing here just with one type of woman's organicologic right. Right. cancer. So the other area of the website that I think is so important is the clinical information yes. area. Yes, we, we're very proud of our information. It's, it's obviously drafted and written by the experts who are on our medical advisory board and on primarily board certified gynecologic oncologists, but we have nurses and others who have, have also contributed content. Very proud of that effort. We also have a wonderful clinical trials section of our website. So there is in, there's phase three clinical trials with the GOG in particular that are written in lay terms. So it's really easy to navigate and find those trials and then talk to someone about them if you have questions. In addition to links to all the other cooperative and other important groups that, that have clinical trials available. So we're really proud of that, of that area as well. And we have a wall of hope. Um, and we really, uh, a sisterhood of survivorship where women can go and share their stories and compare stories. And, and it's really, I think we hear a lot of great things about that. And actually just recently, because ovarian cancer is so well organized and the cervical cancer community is organized, but endometrial not so much. And so we just launched uh, the Uterine Cancer Action Network uh, this past year, which is going to help bring together women who are uh, you know, surviving endometrial cancer. And you know, then there are the more rare and less discussed women's cancers, you know, vulvar cancer, mm -hmm. vaginal cancer, mm -hmm. all these cancers that they're painful to talk about and these women feel really isolated. Mm -hmm the resources there as well for these less discussed cancers. They're, they're on the website. You have all of those, uh, the cancers that you just mentioned on the website. If women have any questions, they can always call our headquarters office. We can put them in touch with a doctor in their area to find out further information about these cancers. Um, but yes, I couldn't agree with you more. And what about the area for mothers that are trying to make decisions about vaccinating? Mm -hmm. um, their Very daughter? good question. The foundation also heads the National Cervical Cancer Public Education Campaign in the country. Again, we have 32 organizations that are part of that collaborative. And what we do is we have a great website that is part of our foundation for womenscancer.org, strictly dedicated to cervical cancer, HPV. There's, there's a wonderful Ask the Doctor section on there, and you can actually go and ask a question and get a response back. Um, we're very proud of that, but yes, all the vaccine information as, as sort of presented and positioned by the, the society is on that site. What's great is that you've got this uh, level of physician talent and, and, and brains mm -hmm. and commitment mm -hmm. that's really providing the content. Absolutely. And so the people going to the site can be assured Absolutely. that they are getting top-notch, well-vetted medical information. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have um, a very, I mean, in-depth process even within the society. So it goes through several layers before that information is ever, ever made public. So you have something coming up yet this mm -hmm. year, a, a very mm -hmm. big event. Oh, we're so proud. Um, our first event was actually held in 2009, and it's the Race to End Women's Cancer Weekend. And this weekend is held in Washington, D.C., on Freedom Plaza. And on Saturday, we have three concurrent survivors courses, um, bringing together all women who are surviving gynecologic cancer. So there's a specialized course for ovarian cancer survivors. There's a cervical cancer survivors course, as well as a endometrial cancer survivors course. Full day, free courses, and we're encouraging all women to attend. Are the courses conducted by a panel of experts? Well, there's different panels for each, each course, as it relates to, and there's different topics. And again, if you want to go to the foundationforwomenscancer.org website, 
you can click on our educational course tab and basically every course is there. We don't have the, all the speakers confirmed for November yet, but I can promise you they will be an amazing group as they have been before. And then the, the nice part about that weekend is you bring together, we bring together all the um, women attending these courses and others um, afterwards for a reception so they have time to network and get to know each other. And I think that was a favorite part of, of last year's course because it's really a wonderful way to get to know people. And the, the information that's given out in the course, it's clinical, psychosocial, quality a combination of, life. of everything. Um, we have the latest of what's going on in the research. We have clinical trials available. We have survivorship issues. We have sexuality issues. We have, you know, our most recent topic that was at a course, which you know I've heard so much feedback about, is is chemo brain. You know, there's not a lot of data to support chemo brain, but almost, you know, any woman you talk to that's surviving cancer believes in it. So we've brought together an expert that has some data, and she really talks about, the, about chemo brain. And so we really try to review the evaluations and really adapt the program accordingly. And what's wonderful is out of the 200 women that attend our courses on average, about 150 submit an evaluation, and they give us really great feedback. And before we put on another course, we always look at that feedback. And there's a Q&A opportunity with thought there, leaders. Yes, absolutely. There's a panel um, in the morning and there's a panel in the afternoon, and you can ask questions. And um, it's really, uh, again, we've held over 40 courses now across the country, and we have, again, 11 planned for this year and already planned for 2012 and beyond. And Karen, for women who cannot physically mm -hmm. attend, some of the information that's presented at the uh, educational at the, series mm -hmm available online? Sure. Um, what you can do, actually we hold, we hold teleconferences after, uh, say, every third course, we hold a telephone conference and pick some of the hot topics, if you will, and we, so people can call in for free and listen to speakers on those topics. And then also, if you want information after a course that you're unable to attend, you can always call our office and we have a handout booklet that we can send. And don't you have a doctor's rock band or something? Oh, yes. There is the most wonderful rock band called NED, obviously no evidence of disease, and it's six gynecologic oncologists who are the most passionate, wonderful people, who are great surgeons and physicians, but I'll tell you, they have turned into great musicians. The first time I heard them, they were very good, and but they were you know, surgeons that were singing and, and were good at it, I mean, extremely good. But I just saw their concert, um, gosh, a few months ago, and I was like stopped in my tracks because they actually are wonderful. And, and yes, you can find information about their band as well on our site. Thank you, Karen. I'm glad we could spend some time together, that you could update viewers, and we can promote what you're doing and, and make the journey for women facing the spectrum of gynecologic cancers a little bit easier. Well, I want to tell you it's just been a pleasure to be here today. Um, I think back to the many years we've known each other, and I just think your program is outstanding, and anything we can do for, on behalf of the Foundation, please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you, Karen. Karen Carlson, Executive Director of the Foundation for Women's Cancer.